Good morning and welcome to another Tuesday tour. It's John Sauter from your Purdue Alumni Association, along with Michael Fairchild, also from your Purdue Alumni Association, uh, coming to you from each of our respective homes. I'm in West Lafayette, Michael's across the river in Lafayette. Well, we wanted to get together again with the Tuesday tour. Uh, this time we want to talk about the flu pandemic. And so I'm uh, going to talk a little bit about the, the history as it uh, impacts Purdue. And I want to try to cover the university's response up to this point, which I think has just been very, very good. And I think you'd be interested in that. And so as we do that, I have uh, two disclaimers right off the bat. Uh, one is this is being recorded a week before you're seeing it. And so more decisions and things could have happened between then uh, and, and the time that I'm recording this. And then uh, secondly, I've tried to be as comprehensive as I can, but there's just so much going on across the campus and beyond that I'm sure I won't be able to touch on all the things. But I did want to give you kind of a perspective of, of, uh, of, the, of the, the very fine response being made across the campus uh, impacting the variety of audiences. Uh, so with that said, uh, let me get into the history of, of pandemics and uh, tip of the cap to uh, Alan Karpik and John Norber, who uh, helped me out with a little bit of the history. Uh, and as we get into that, I can say to you that these are times that none of us have been through before. And it does, it provides a little comfort to know that it's happened before, but in fact, it actually did. Uh, in 1918, 102 years ago, uh, there was a pandemic and it uh, had a significant impact and it actually did impact Purdue University specifically. And uh, that's covered nicely in John Norberg's book. And so I wanna highlight John Norberg's Ever True. If you haven't got a copy, you need to get one through University Press, but I wanna read a passage from that. He says, the global influ influenza pandemic of 1918-19 which infected about 500 million people worldwide and killed at least 50 million, also impacted Purdue, where 11 people died. In a 1918 alumnus, editor George Aide reported, October 17, the whole state is under lock and key on account of the flu, and Purdue is running on one cylinder. October 18, further suspension of university classes announced by Dr. Stone because of the flu. So it goes back over a hundred years or so. And obviously times have changed significantly, uh, but it was a disruption and uh, uh, there's been other disruptions, clearly not, uh, not to the risen to the level of, of our current situation. But I'll walk through a few of those. And some of those I suspect are gonna be very familiar to you. So I mentioned World War II, where the campus really just had to adjust instruction and housing and everything to accommodate the efforts of World War II, get officers trained and get them on their way. Uh, significant changes had to be made. And then John F. Kennedy's assassination. Uh, that's one of those events where you probably remember where you were when it happened. Um, that occurred, classes canceled, football game canceled um, uh, on, on campus during that particular time. And then the blizzards of 1977, 78. You might remember the blizzards, significant snow Classes canceled for about a week or so. I remember going to the grocery store and pulling home the groceries on a sled. I mean, you literally just couldn't get out, out, out of your driveway, sometimes not even out of your house easily. Uh, following that was the coal strike of 1978. That had an impact. Art Hansen, President Hansen, made some significant decisions around that period of time. Uh, 2001, of course, brought us 9 11, and uh, that was just a, a horrific week on campus as everybody got uh, adjusted to that. Uh, my memory is going to the um, Hall of Music, a packed Hall of Music, as that was a Thursday, as I recall, and uh, the university had some speakers just to reassure everyone. And uh, uh, there was a student speaker. The student speaker was Aaron Taylor, a sophomore, who gave just a memorable speech from representing the student body. Uh, one of encouragement. We were so proud of Erin. She actually was a West Lafayette high school grad. My wife taught her English and uh, I, I mentored her at Purdue. She followed college. She founded college uh, mentors uh, on campus and was the outstanding senior that year, but just did a wonderful job 
uh, during that period of time. And obviously then we've also had some uh, weather interruptions on campus where classes are canceled due to the wind chill factor. Uh, but those have their own dynamics. This is what we're going through clearly as many more significant dynamics um, as we're at home and and uh, uh, dealing with what we can and what we know at, at that particular time. So it has been here before, but during these trying times, I can tell you uh, uh, the university has responded extremely well, I think, and I want to kind of go through maybe some of those responses. Um, first, you have to consider we have over 43,000 students on campus, over 10,000 faculty and staff members, 5,000 classes are being taught on a regular basis, uh, which had to be put uh, online. 14,000 students living on campus. There's just a wide variety of things going on, including uh, research. Research has to continue in many cases. We can't uh, let a lot of the experiments and things uh, uh, not be attended to. Significant decisions had to be made, and I wanna try to go through some of those. But I can tell you now we have a vacant campus with uh, buildings closed, places pretty well emptied out as we've made all these adjustments. Then the first I want to, area I want to get into is that of communication. I just think we've had very timely and, and very in, in, in informity, informing, uh, informative, and, and comprehensive uh, uh, communication. Uh, President Daniels has had some very uh, uh, good videos that he's provided several times. Provost uh, Jay Eckridge has provided uh, several emails and memos relative to uh, the instructional side, the academic side of things, uh, as all in-person classes are canceled and faculty members had to adjust and, and put their courses online. For some, that was easy. For some, it was quite challenging. And then our Vice President for Human Resources, Bill Bell, has issued some memorandums relative to all faculty and staff. Uh, I can tell you all staff remain in pay status, which is quite an accomplishment and so much uh, appreciated by, by everybody involved. Uh, essential staff are going to work, you know. Uh, things have to be tended to, like the research labs. Uh, I can tell you construction on campus is continuing. Uh, the grass is growing, and so that's gotta be cut. And so there are some things going on on campus, but it's all just extremely, um, extremely limited. And then lastly, Purdue Today, the daily uh, update that we get relative to a variety of happenings on campus continues to keep us informed with always providing us reminders about how we respond to the, to the virus and the appropriate steps to take. Um, on several fronts, one is the student front, campus housing. All the students in campus housing and all students in off-campus housing were encouraged to move home if they possibly could to avoid any gatherings. And so a monumental task, and of the 14,000 on campus, I think all but about 10% or so did move off campus. But even that 10% and even less than that now, they had to be fed. And so Wiley Dining Court uh, became the dining court where they were fed, takeout only, of course, and keeping their six foot social distancing proximity to each other. Uh, but some are still there. I think they've probably been consolidated now into about one hall or two or so. And then study abroad, all international travel abroad, all had to be canceled for spring and even for summer. Uh, a variety of activities on campus that involved a lot of student planning. Spring Fest should have been occurring about this particular time with the Bug Bowl and all the things going on there uh, in, in, uh, on the Ag campus and surrounding it. Uh, that was canceled. The HTM uh, Black Tie Dinner uh, uh, had to be canceled. All the students involved uh, with that were quite disappointed. Uh, but Anthony Cauldron actually did a nice job of having a virtual event including the auction, and maybe some of you uh, saw that. Grand Prix, the Grand Prix race, one of the few times in its 60-year history, the Grand Prix race was not run, and so the, the, the track stood vacant out, uh, out there. Um, and just recently, um, in a very timely decision, the Board of Trustees granted early graduation to 144 pharmacy students so that they could uh, graduate and be certified and go out and be practicing pharmacists um, where pharmacists are being needed these days because uh, there's a continuing demand for those folks. And uh, we just thought that was a fine decision to make on, on behalf of the, of the trustees. And when it comes to operations uh, uh, on campus, 
uh, staff have been encouraged to, uh, to work from home. And so all of us are, and we're all learning all kinds of variety of ways to stay in touch, creative things to do, programs to offer uh, virtually. And, and so there's some uh, positives coming out of that. Uh, the CoREC uh, uh, has closed. That was a great place for all of us to go and, and uh, relieve our attention and work out a little bit. But of course, like all campus buildings, it closed, but to their credit, they've made themselves available virtually. And so if you go to their website, you can actually uh, be led through workouts and exercises, yoga demonstrations, cooking demonstrations, wellness activities, um, stress relief, even financial management, um, all a variety of courses available, just very cleverly put up on, 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 on a website for all of us to see. Uh, the Purdue Pharmacy remains open, as do pharmacies, um, but they took it upon themselves to make hand sanitizer available. And so they've made up several batches of hand sanitizer, 80% alcohol, of course. And uh, so you could uh, work your way down to campus and run in and get a, a couple of containers, only limited to two, of hand sanitizer through the Purdue Pharmacy. And then we get into summer, summer conferences, including our favorite grandparents university that was canceled and all the planning that's taking place decisions being made about whether to postpone um, to the fall or kind of just do them next year cancel them. i think grandparents university has been canceled and will will be redone uh, next year but some special offerings have come out one is purdue global purdue global has a uh, a baseball course that they offer i think it started on opening day it's available now uh, free of charge. If you're a baseball fan, you might want to go to that and pick up some interesting uh, background and, and things about uh, that sport. And even our own Purdue Alumni Association has started a program reading to young people are in cooperation with our College of Education and their graduates. We've contacted over 50 alum who are actually reading stories, story time in the evenings generally, and so they'll be happy to read stories. You know, if, as you gather the kids around uh, as an offering. Uh, moving on to athletics, uh, all spring sports were impacted. Of course, the NCAA tournament for basketball uh, for men's and women's, as well as Big Ten tournaments, um, all canceled. All spring sports, baseball and softball, track and golf, all those facilities now stand empty. Spring football was actually uh, canceled also. That was our first glimpse to how the football team will be doing. Not to mention all the practices that go along with all of these sports have been impacted, even the crew team. Uh, I was walking in the neighborhood this past week and Dave Kusick, the coach of the crew team, tells me the first time in 41 years that he's not had a, had a shell in the water and, and his team's uh, getting ready for uh, Ghana someplace. I think seniors, when I think of senior athletes and senior students, uh, th those are the most that I have, those are the students I have the most empathy for because um, their experiences have really kind of come to a close, not the way they really would have expected. Um, and, 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 and so that's uh, just so unfortunate, uh, which leads me to think about commencement. Commencement on campus is the one event where we can, it's the culmination of, of uh, study for all the students we're known for our uh, elaborate commencement uh, with a lot of pomp and circumstance and that sort of thing. And we just really hated to give up on that, uh, but we had to like everything else. Uh, but uh, President Daniels has uh, uh, provided a great message about in commencement that uh, it's gonna go on in a different form. Let me read you what he had to say. Purdue is known for the most personal and memorable commencement of any large university. If we can't put on the nation's best traditional ceremony, then we'll produce the re best remote one. We promise to continue to do this in the Purdue way. Students will still receive their own diploma. Each name will be called individually and participants will hear from our excellent student musicians and speakers. It's a huge disappointment to, to us all that we can't do this in person, but with input from a creative group of graduating seniors, we will do the best we can to preserve the essence of this special occasion. So if you can just imagine the variety of efforts going in to make that happen. And so we're all really looking forward you know, to that particular event. And then lastly, uh, looking ahead. Um, 
President Daniels has created the Safe Campus Task Force, realizing that once we get through all this, and we will get through it, things are not going to be the same. There's going to clearly be a new normal. And so in anticipation of instruction, in anticipation of, of housing and orientation, and we have a whole new crop of new students, what are the adjustments that we can be making to make that uh, as, as positive as possible? And so this uh, task force, campus-wide task force, is looking into that very thing. So just a great forward-thinking move, I thought, on behalf of, of the university. All the areas that I've mentioned now do have websites available that you can go to. And so from the co-rec to the commencement and all those, if you want to get more details, I encourage you to do that. You need to look up their websites and go to those if you possibly can. Uh, on the lighter side, I can tell you that uh, some of our favorite statues on campus now have face masks on them, reminding us all that uh, we need to have that face mask in place when we go outside. But that was a nice surprise for many of us, and uh, it's a great thing. I hope you've enjoyed all the pictures that Michael has put up. I've made several trips out, taking those from my car, but then Michael has blended those in, and so we appreciate him doing that. So in, in summary, I can say you can be very proud of your university's response to, uh, to what's going on in our current situation. They've just made significantly responsible decisions. And uh, as we go forward to this kind of uncharted territory, but we will get through this. We're boilermakers, we can pull together and we can see you on the other side. And so I encourage you to stay healthy, follow the rules, and uh, we'll see you in two weeks. Hail Purdue.